transition to being in our time of worship. We go from being scattered to being gathered together. We bring our heart and soul and mind and strength together. I will light this candle as a symbol of Christ, the light of the world, being in our midst, and we will remember that as it, it provides us with uh, inspiration and illumination throughout our worship service and at the close of our service, uh, we remember the words of Jesus who said, you are the light of the world. And, and when that is extinguished, we know that when we go through these doors, we take that light into the world as we are the body of Christ uh, uh, in our midst. So let us now receive this music. Remember that we are one body that's Christ in the world. 
eternal source of creative life and love, receive now our silent prayers. To all of our silent prayers, let the people say, Amen. Amen. God, who is our rock and salvation, promises and delivers strength for our journeys of trust and discipleship. Amen. 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 Let, Let us, us now, now receive, receive the word. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today's Hebrew scripture is comes to us from the part of Isaiah, which we generally refer to as the Deuteral Isaiah, chapters 40 through 55, which are forecasting the Messiah to come. The first part of this chapter has been read previously. And you will notice that we are planning on reading verses 21 through 22, excuse me, verses 21 through 22 and 28 through 31. And you might say, why in the world did they leave those out? Well, I'm giving you as your homework to go and read those verses. <laughs> but in conversation, we would probably say at that point, on the other hand, and so the same message is continued. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and although I learned them in a slightly different phraseology, the last verse is one I have done all my life, <coughs> and one of my favorites. So now let us listen to words from Isaiah chapter 40. Did you not know? Have you not heard? Was it not told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood that since the earth was founded? Yahweh sits above the vaulted roots of the world, and its inhabitants look like grasshoppers. God spreads out the skies like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent for mortals to live under. To whom have you likened me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Did you not know? Have you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. This God does not faint or grow weary. With the depth of understanding that is unsearchable. God gives strength to the weary and empowers the powerless. Young women may grow tired and weary. Young men may stumble and fall. But those who wait for Yahweh will refine their renewed power. They soar on eagles' wings and they run and don't get weary. They walk and never tire. Here is the readings from the book of Isaiah. The Gospel reading today comes from us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Upon leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered Simon's and Andrew's house with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told Jesus about her. Jesus went over to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up, and the fever left her. Then she went about her work. After sunset, as evening drew on, they brought to Jesus all who were ill and possessed by demons. Everyone in the town crowded around the door. Jesus healed many who were sick with different diseases and cast out many demons. But Jesus would not permit the demons to speak because they knew who he was. Rising early the next morning, Jesus went off to a lonely place in the desert and prayed there. Simon and some companions managed to find Jesus and said to him, everybody is looking for you, Jesus said to them. Let us move on to the neighboring villages so that I may proclaim the good news there also. That is what I have come to do. 
So Jesus went into their synagogues proclaiming the good news and expelling demons throughout the whole of Galilee. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. John uh, Poole was right when he talked about uh, the fact that uh, these are scriptures that we ought to take home and look up and, and read about uh, and, and, and learn more about. That's always the case. Um, a, a, you, you know that we, we follow the lectionary cycle or we are aided by the lectionary cycle of readings for cheap being chosen for each particular week and that means that every three years in that cycle the same readings come up in one way or another. Um, but, you know, every three years is probably the same readings. I, I hope that it is the case that, you know, we, we've been at this for 12 years, so that would be four times, that, you know, this is not the fourth time of preaching the same sermon. <laughs> um, what I believe is that we are led by the Spirit to convey a message that is important for this moment. And so it's with that that, you know, preachers pick and choose a little bit in the midst of what's going on. But it is in the leading of the Spirit that we strive to bring a message that is important for this day. So with that in mind, let us pray. Loving God, we continue to be blessed by your presence among us. And we continue to be blessed by the presence of those who are with us. We pray, loving God, that we are able to share with all of us here for this time the love and grace and compassion and inspiration that you have for us. We know that you choose to be in the world. You choose to build a home among us. And so as we welcome others to our church home, as we welcome you to the home in our hearts, we pray, loving God, that we will understand how it is that you want to speak to us. Through the many words that we sing and hear and pray and think and write in this worship time, we pray that the word that you have for each of us is what we are able to receive. And so now as we continue in the tradition of our faith and remember the words of the psalmist, we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The second Sunday of February is Boy Scout Sunday. So as not to appear gender biased, I will also say that the second Sunday of March is Girl Scout Sunday. But this is February and I was a Boy Scout. And I sometimes make the connection and get nostalgic for the times when scouting was very much a part of my life. Even as a boy, my faith was part of who I was. And as a scout, I earned the God and Country religious emblem that Methodist boys worked for. I was awarded mine along with my best friend, George Ott Paul, at our home church in my hometown, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, almost 50 years ago on Boy Scout Sunday. I should dig that picture up for Throwback Thursday. <laughs> now this little trip down memory lane coincides with our scripture lesson today because the Boy Scout slogan, not the, not the motto, the slogan that dovetails with my faith expression is simple and direct. Do a good turn daily. Today's message from the Bible ages is not much different. Let's consider it. The Isaiah passage we heard John read is a wonderful presentation of the active and persistent nature of God. Did you not know? Do you not hear? Have you not heard? God gives strength to the weary and empowers the powerless. 
The Isaiah passage is one of those readings that speaks to us as if it is new, even though it was written ages and ages ago. The expressed certainty of God's goodness and human potential is meant as a reassurance and reinforcement to encourage us to live our everyday lives so that justice and compassion are most important to us. Dr. Bruce G. Epperly, who is a UCC minister, a theologian, a process theologian, an author of like 16 or 500 books, <laughs> and Lancaster Theologi Theological Seminary faculty member, writes about Isaiah's encouragement saying, when we are in tune with God's movements in our lives, we mediate powers. We mediate powers that transform our lives and the world. This power does not insulate us from life's tragedies and failures, but it gives us insight and courage to respond to them. Now knowing what we know today about the personality traits and from what were the reports we have and what we read about Jesus going off to lonely places to get recharged, we can pretty much figure that Jesus was an introvert. What I learned in Doctor of Ministry school last summer is that introverts are not necessarily people who want to shy away from human interaction. Introverts are people who need to get away by themselves in order to recharge their batteries so they can function well in society. I was glad to learn that I am an introvert because it also confirmed what I sensed for my real need for downtime in order to have good up and running time. I like the fact that when Jesus got recharged, he did not turn into a jumping up and down wild gladhander. He simply re-energized and became ready to continue in ministry helping people and giving the good news of grace and hope. When he was told, everybody is looking for you, Jesus said to them, let us move on to the neighboring villages so that I may proclaim the good news there also. That is what I have come to do. And Jesus went into their synagogues proclaiming good news of God's grace, not condemnation. I think the model of ministry that Jesus demonstrated for Peter's mother-in-law is our exquisite instruction. Let's remember what Jean read. Jesus went over to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up, and the fever left her. There were other comments in that scripture phrase, and as a side note, I just want to suggest that we do not need to get caught up in a fool's errand by trying to figure out what was meant by the biblical references made to demons. As I say over and over again, it is neither right nor productive to try to bring ancient concepts of science and disease into modern contexts. Back then, demons were the way that anomalies were explained. Today, we are not bound by such ancient, illiterate concepts. It is always right and productive to pursue lines of thinking that lead us into ways of goodness and light. Every so often the scriptures deviate into avenues of darkness and blame, but that is always the time, as people in Bible Bites will know I will say, that is always the time to keep reading further. Because the ultimate purpose of Bible stories will eventually unfold. And that unfolding is meant to bring trust and wholeness into our lives. In the realm of our Christian story, from the Gospel named Mark, when Jesus enters our rooms, 
he offers not a hand of shame and quackery. He offers a hand of help and healing. Now Langston Hughes was a black writer whose poetry speaks like scripture to me, of history and vision combined to produce better lives for all humanity. His poetry is born out of his existence as a person discriminated against because others thought he was less than gifted by the way his creator fashioned him. I think Langston Hughes is to be admired because he writes truthfully as a black man in a white society. And his inspiration is not limited racially. All of us can dream a world. He envisions as he wrote in 1926. I dream a world where man no other man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its paths adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soul nor avarice blights our day. A world I dream where black or white, whatever race you be, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free, where wretchedness will hang its head and joy, like a pearl, attends the needs of all mankind. Of such I dream, my world. On this day, the day of the 10th annual meeting of Bloom in the Desert Ministries, members and friends, we are a United Church of Christ and reconciling congregation in Palm Springs, California, it is good to have our scriptures lay out basic information for our spiritual reality and missional purpose. These words given to us from Isaiah and the model for ministry given to us from Jesus survive the foibles and follies of our fragile lives. They live on to inspire the hearts of anyone who wants to take them seriously. We need not fiddle with so-called demons. We are called to go from place to place doing whatever we can to grasp hands, to help people up, and to work to cause the fevers that keep people down to leave us. I do not need to provide an inventory of the fevers that are plaguing our societies and relationships here and around the world. Personal reflection and the news shows can do, can do plenty of that. What I hope to give a hand to this day is envisioning and experiencing God not as an instigator of difficulties and dangers, but rather the eternal source of our inspiration to rise up on eagle's wings daily. As we prayed earlier this morning, it is good for all of us to continually pray, saying, help us remember that we are one body as Christ in the world. Teach us to trust your promises in Christ, embracing us in spirit so that we live united and proclaim with one voice the power and potential of Jesus' ministry. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
said something like, you have to go to this church, it's the best church in the whole world, I don't know where you've ever been going in your life. It wasn't quite like that, but he heard from Bob Bloom from a friend uh, from Maryland and, uh, and came and has been with us and uh, so forth. Marty uh, has, has, has been with Bloom for years and years and years. <laughs> Former life too. And, 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 uh, and, 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 and has chosen this moment to covenant in membership. Uh, Leo has connected with Bloom uh, through Transgender Day of Awareness, uh, uh, um, a Remembrance, Transgender Day of Remembrance, and and uh, activities and so forth, and was um, encouraged to come to Bloom uh, by Marty, and we're very thankful for that kind of relational, it's called relational evangelism, don't be afraid of that word, um, and we're, we're uh, uh, there, and, and, uh, and, and also, you know, we're, uh, Dick and Kay, you know, uh, are, are welcoming as well for Leo, and so we're happy uh, that Leo can be with us today. In your um, uh, program, there is a little, is it yellow? Yeah. A little yellow sheet of paper, which will be a response moment at that time. But we will uh, begin now. My dear friends in Christ, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Our household of faith is built upon the foundation of the prophets and apostles. Christ Jesus is our cornerstone, and the whole structure is joined together as a dwelling place of God in spirit. 
Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this place and time with us. We give thanks for every community that has felt and nurtured your presence along your journey. So now, knowing what you do, what we do of each other, knowing what we do of each other, I ask you this question that will establish our covenant with one another. Do you promise to support and participate in the life and mission of this community of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as we serve this community and the world? If so, your answer is, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Using the words printed in the insert, let us now as a gathered congregation express to these persons our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We, we the gathered members and friends of Bloom in the Desert Ministries joyfully welcome you in the membership of our church. We promise to love you with friendship and prayers, to work with you in labors of love, and walk with you in his hopes and fears and happiness and sadness. Together we will grow in our faith as we love God with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to be your people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending us Mike and Marty and Leo, that we may work together in serving the needs of others, confirm in us the power of your eternal covenant with every living creature, that we may live in your spirit, share regularly in worship, and so love each other that we may have among us the same mind which was in Christ Jesus, our Savior, brother, sovereign, and friend. Let us all say together. Amen. Amen. And now, as um, our officers, Linda Lang, our moderator, Jim Nixon, our treasurer, and Phyllis Ramsey, our clerk, offers on our behalf the hand of fellowship. It can be either the right hand or the left hand. We don't discriminate here. Uh, and uh, welcomes folks. They will then sign in the book that has the members of uh, sign in of all people who have become members and associate members. They will deposit into this vase a uh, smooth river stone that they were given uh, the first time they came to Bloom. And this contains the, the, the river stones of everyone who has covenanted in membership with Bloom. It is symbolically building the foundation of our church. And then uh, the, what they all have been waiting for is this certificate of membership suitable for framing, uh, which the minister always looks for when he or she comes for a visit. So we, we know that that's put in a wonderful place. So Leo, I give this to you. And now we will, as, as this is done, thank you Richard, as this is taken care of, let us sing the third verse of There is a Balm in Gilead. Refrain, verse, refrain. Let's pray. O oh God, most merciful and gracious, of whose bounty we have all received, accepted, we pray this offering of your people. Remember in your love those who have brought it and those for whom it is given. And so follow with it your blessing that it may promote peace and goodwill among all people and advance the realm of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We, we connect and uh, we pray the prayer given to us from Jesus using the words most familiar and comfortable to you, saying, uh, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen.